Hey, what is going on? It is your favorite entrepreneur turned techie, Sierra Nicole. And I know that it's been a minute, okay? It's been a minute since we got to get on here and talk to each other. Haven't really been posting a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, which is changing, okay? I am back active. I have so much information to share. So much has been going on with me with transitioning really full time into the technology industry. And so I want to talk about just like what my journey has been like and some of the hurdles that I've hit from trying to go from a full time business owner and entrepreneur to full time in tech. So I started out as a full time entrepreneur business owner back in 2018. So it has been some years now. I have not worked a traditional job since 2018. Now, I'm definitely proud of that fact because it's not easy being a business owner. Most people don't last the first two years. So I'm definitely proud of all the things that I've accomplished. But there's been so many reasons why I've this year started looking into getting into the tech realm. I, I kind of fell into my lap a little bit. And once I got a taste of it, I was like, wow, I really want to pursue this full time. And maybe I'll do another video on that if you guys want to hear more, just like exactly how I got into it. But on this video, I really want to focus on some of the hurdles that I went through going from full-time business owner to full-time in tech because especially with today's economy I see a lot more business owners going back to corporate or getting a full-time job or career outside of their business and it is not easy you guys you would think that because you've been a business owner you have all these skills all this knowledge any company would be blessed to have you right that was my mindset going into this but boy was I wrong? Okay, I was wrong. And it makes sense because when I'm thinking of it from a business owner standpoint, it can be intimidating. It can be a threat to hire someone who is very entrepreneurial spirited, right? Because now you're thinking if I hire this person, are they going to take my processes, my products, my insider knowledge and use that for their own business? Or are they just working this temporarily, right? And maybe they just need money now and then going to go off and do their own thing. So those are definitely some worries I think that a lot of companies and businesses have when it comes to hiring business owners. So a lot of business owners, have a very, very hard time transitioning back into corporate America in any industry. And so I transitioned into tech earlier this year, um, around like March, and now I've transitioned into tech sales. And so I want to talk about some of the things that I did to make my resume look a lot more appealing since I'm coming from being a full-time business owner. So I didn't have, you know, traditional jobs to put on that resume. Um, and at first, when I was first creating my resume, I hadn't made one since 2018, right? And so it took me a very, very long time to figure out like, what is wrong with my resume? Why am I not getting callbacks? I had been applying to hundreds, literally, not even exaggerating, hundreds and hundreds of job listings, and I was not getting any calls. I was not getting any interviews. And so what happened was I ended up calling a friend, right? So this is why having a network is so important. I ended up calling a friend who's already in the tech industry. And I said, Hey, I want to transition into tech sales. I'm coming from a role where I was marketing for a small startup, a very, very small startup. I want to get my foot in the door a different way and start out in tech sales of some aspect, right? And so she gave me a few tips. Those few tips were gold, okay? And so I'm gonna tell you those things that she told me to do with my resume that helped me. So number one, I had to remove the business owner off of my resume, okay? They don't wanna see that you're a business owner. They just don't, okay? And again, we talked about this earlier. It's kind of a threat a little bit, right? When you're coming in saying, hey, I'm a full-time business owner now looking to jump into a full-time role, they're gonna be thinking, what's the real ulterior motive here? Like, what's the real reason behind them wanting to go full-time, right? Or do they have the time and energy and headspace to go full-time, right? That's a concern. So I removed that from my resume. And instead, what I did was I went through and I looked at everything that I did in my business. I literally made a list of all the things that I did in my business, right? So I created courses, I created content, I did social media campaigns, worked with a bunch of different brands. I had clients in my consulting business. So I was helping them with building their business, building sales funnels and web pages and creating offers, helping them run their memberships. I was doing a lot of things. So I went made a big list of all things that I was doing. Now, what I did is I put this list in ChatGPT and I said, ChatGPT, I need you to tell me 
some job titles that would align with these different tasks that I was doing. And so what I ended up doing on my resume was I actually put those job titles on my resume. So instead of saying business owner at Sierra Nicole's business, I put, I was a project manager at Sierra Nicole's business because I was, I was managing projects. I had um, employees and contractors and I was managing timelines and budgets. I was doing all those things. I was a project manager. Instead of putting that I was launching courses, I put that I was a e-learning developer and I was a program manager at Sierra, Sierra Nicole's business, right? So I put my business name there. Instead of putting owner, I put the actual roles that I was doing and then highlighting my skills and the things that I accomplished throughout my business. When I tell you that this has been a game changer in getting interviews and even getting offers from those interviews, it was a game changer. And so if you have a business right now and you're trying to transition into full time working in tech or really any industry, but I focus on the tech industry because that's really the only industry that I have experience with. Remove that owner title, okay? Put the titles that you actually did in your business. That is going to be huge, okay? If you did contracts with people or did um, different projects with companies, like list those things on there, okay? So if you were a contractor and you worked with a brand for a project, list that. Okay, they want to see that experience. Another thing that really helped me as far as like optimizing my resume was making sure that I was putting quantifiable descriptions on my bullet points. Okay, so you can't just put um, I managed employees. I, you know, took care of the bookkeeping like they care about that kind of. But their main objective with trying to hire someone is to make, get results, right? So they either want to make more money or save money when they hire you. So they care about the results and the impact that you had. So I made sure that I actually showed, hey, um, I did X, Y, Z, and it resulted in a 50% ROI, right? Or I did X, Y, Z, and it resulted in a 15% increase in client retention, that is immediate results that they can see. Say, hey, this person actually had an impact with the different tasks that they were doing. So you want to have bullet points on your resume that actually show the results, okay? Because we know that you're awesome. You know you're awesome, okay? But your resume is just like a little glimpse and you have to try to show as much as possible of the amazing things that you've done in your business through a few words on your resume, which can be very challenging. So you wanna make sure that you're quantifying those results, okay? That is very, very key. Now, another tip that helped me, um, I saw this, I think like on a TikTok somewhere probably, um, but this really did help me. So right now the job market is just not fun, okay? That's just a fact, it sucks. And this is 2023 of October. So if you're watching this at a different time, maybe the market is different, but right now the job market is a little bit rough, okay? And one thing that I ended up having to do was tailoring my resume to... Not every job listing, but kind of. Like if I was applying for different types of roles, what I did was I put the job description in chat GPT. I said, hey, I'm applying for this job description. Here is my current resume. Please tailor my resume bullet points to match the keywords that are inside of this job listing. And what ChatGPT did was just kind of rewrite my bullet points a little bit. Now it's not gonna be perfect, so you kind of have to pick and choose like which ones sound good and make sure you still have your quantifiable points in there and everything. But doing that and tailoring your resume to the different job listings is very, very important. And if you don't wanna do every job listing, at least make sure that like if you're applying for different positions and different roles, you're at least tailoring it to those exact roles, okay? So you don't wanna take a resume that you use to apply for a project management role and use that same one to apply for a, um, a sales representative role or an account manager role. Those are a little bit two different worlds. So you wanna make sure that you're highlighting different skills and highlighting different things and tasks that you did within your um, resume, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're really tailoring that and including those keywords, okay? Including the different software that they have in the job listing, especially if you have experience with that, make sure you're including that. And also take out anything that is unnecessary, okay? If you have a certificate in psychology, but you are applying for a role that just doesn't have anything to do with psychology, 
don't include it, right? Or if you worked a job at a fast food restaurant and none of those skills are aligning with the job that you're applying for now. So say you're applying for a software engineer and you can't find ways to correlate those skills from your restaurant work to your software engineer work, just leave it off the resume. I think the less is more. The less that they have to digest, the better. So only put things that are relevant to the current position that you're trying to apply for. Now, I know that this was a ton of information, okay? But these are things that absolutely helped me. Like I said, I applied to hundreds and I promise you, I'm not exaggerating. I applied to hundreds of positions this year and only this past like 60 days, I was finally getting interviews once I fixed my resume, okay? And so those things really, really helped me. And thankfully, I've gotten an offer um, from doing this on my resume. Now, getting interviews and actually like acing the interviews and getting that offer are two totally different stories. So I'm definitely going to go over some tips that helped me um, and did some different things that I did as far as like prepping for my interview. I'll do that in a different video, but I really hope that this was helpful for you as a business owner. And the main thing that I really want you to take away is as someone who owns a business, make sure that you are just looking at all the different tasks that you do in your business, all the different skills that you have and really properly communicating that through your resume, okay? Because some of you are already project managers. Some of you are already software engineers. Some of you are already scrum masters. Some of you are already sales representatives. Some of you are already digital marketing specialists. Like you're already doing these things in your business. So the goal is just to communicate that properly so that if somebody sees your resume, they can see exactly the skills that you have and why you would be an awesome fit for this new role, okay? So I hope that this was helpful for you. If you want more tips and want to join a community of people that are in the tech industry, either trying to break into it or already in the industry and just looking to grow and excel in it, make sure you join the Young In Tech Facebook group. I'll put the link down below in the description box. It's completely free. I'm not trying to sell you a course or a program or anything like that. My goal is just to give as much resources as possible. We just launched our nonprofit, Young In Tech Inc., which I'm super excited about. And again, my goal is just to give you as much resources as possible because right now the market is tough okay so you have to stand out you got to put that work in it's like a whole full-time job trying to get a job in tech it's, it's it's truly ridiculous but it's absolutely worth it okay we just gotta put a little work in but it's worth it so any questions that you have make sure you drop them below make sure you hit that subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you want to keep seeing videos like this about the tech industry about business and entrepreneurship let me know um, drop comments, drop topics down below. And again, this is your favorite entrepreneur turned techie, Sierra Nicole. I'm going to catch you on the next video.